We have a special guest preacher who's going to come and share a message with us, and I'm going to invite my friend Rob to come on up. Rob is an awesome guy. I got to meet Rob last school year, and we've been um, getting to know each other this summer. He's like the director of FCA, and he just is, is an awesome, awesome friend um, and has been very encouraging to me as our church. So I'm going to hand the mic over to Rob, and he's going to deliver the word for us. So can you guys give him a new life welcome? Thank you. Thank you. How are we doing, church? So just with those first couple of words of introduction from myself, you can probably tell that I'm not from around here. So usually I tell people I'm from the South, but without going into too much of the story, which would probably take the length of the sermon on its own, here's some of the basics. So I grew up in Australia, in case you couldn't tell already. I met a girl from Freeport online who's sitting out the back with our two kids, like my daughter's pointing to her right now. Isn't that cute? And when we, when we were both in college, so then we got married. She moves to Australia for two years. And we moved back in 2016, settled down in Winnebago, have two kids, and we live happily ever after. But here is something from the story that I do really want you to know. And maybe you've already known this because maybe you've traveled to Australia before or maybe you've seen where Australia is on a map. But Australia is a very, very long way away. And I'm talking 18 plus hours of flying. And during that time, you get to know people pretty well. And I want to tell you about someone that I met on a flight, and her name is Tracy. In May of 2017, I went back to Australia for my best friend's wedding, and on board the 14-hour flight between San Francisco and Sydney, I met Tracy. So as I'm moving towards the back of the plane to find my seat, I can see my aisle seat. It's there down the back, and the seat besides me is already filled, and there's this lady that's sitting there. And she's talking to her son directly behind her. And you know what I thought? I thought, I should give up my seat so they can sit together. Well, at least that's probably what I should have thought, right? But it was more like, I'm on this plane for 14 hours. There is no way that I am sitting in a middle seat of an airplane for that length of time. Truthfully, though, both of those things went through my head but it was really a nudge of my spirit telling me not to switch seats with her son and to stay in my assigned seat and get to know this lady. So I sit down and we're waiting for all the other passengers to board and this lady kept on talking to her son and you could see Tracy had lost her voice and she was straining to talk. So I'm like, great Lord, I feel like I'm supposed to get to know this lady but she can't even talk to me. So the plane takes off, dinner's served, and then it starts. Hi, my name's Tracy. Are you traveling home or are you going on vacation? So that question's a little bit complicated to me, right? Because when I go back to Australia, it's sort of home, it's sort of not, it's sort of a vacation, it's sort of not, because I'm coming back for a best friend's wedding, but we got through those initial pleasantries. And I asked the same question back to Tracy. And that's when I knew the reason why I was sitting in that seat. So actually, we're heading back to Papua New Guinea. My family and I are part of a team of missionaries down there translating the Bible. Wait, what? So immediately, we went from strangers to being part of the same family and being part of the same team. So she's sharing about her heart. I'm sharing my heart. She told me her life's journey. I told her mine. She got the long version that time because we had three hours and more to kill during that time. And she wasn't able to leave, so she got to hear it. It was great. It was just such a beautiful time sharing with one another. So I told Tracy how I became a Christian during my college years at the Australian Defence Force Academy when I was training to become an officer in the Australian Air Force. I told her that when I joined a church at my base in 2010, I started to have a passion for youth ministry. 
and I started to feel called to a ministry, but a ministry outside of a church, something like a camp or a college ministry, sports chaplaincy, something like that. But I had to finish out my time in the military first. I told her how we moved to the US in May of 2016 and we found out we were pregnant with our first child a month later and would soon be paying off a mortgage and I just needed a job. So I ended up commuting to work at a distribution center in DeKalb from Winnebago. I told her about a job interview I had coming up scheduled for when I got back from the wedding at a pharmaceutical company in Rockford just so I could get a job closer to home. I told her that I went to a church at a newly established campus plant here in Winnebago and I wanted to launch a youth ministry there. I basically told her I was in a time of waiting for the door to open to do ministry. And you know what she said to me? This wise ministry leader who could have turned around and said, the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few, just go out there and get involved. She said... Don't waste the opportunities for ministry God has in front of you each and every day where he has you. And she also said, we, as missionaries, her and her family, people called to full-time ministry, need people like you to do the work that we do. We need people like you in order for us to do the, people, to do the work that we do. I was waiting on something the Lord was saying not yet to. And that focus took away from how I could serve right then and right there. Not only with my time, but with the skills and resources the Lord was equipping me with during that time. And isn't that our problem? Even though we are part of the team... We sit on the sidelines observing, watching the game, waiting for that moment to enter rather than serving in the moment. Or maybe it's not about waiting for that moment you sit on the sidelines for, but rather you just don't feel equipped to enter the game. Or maybe we think that there are already enough people doing stuff that you sit on the sidelines because you don't really feel like you're needed. And the sideline gets comfortable, so you just continue to watch. So yes, the metaphor does continue with sport, and I'm with Fellowship of Christian Athletes, so sport is sort of what we do. But if we change the team to body, as the Bible talks about, the body of believers... Isn't that what we do? Become spectators in the work of the gospel? So today we're, we're in 1 Corinthians 12 and starting in verse 12. I believe it will be up on the screen, but if you wanted to follow along, 1 Corinthians 12 starting in verse 12. For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body... Though many are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. And we're going to stop there for a second. So we're going to talk football for a second. And yes, some of you should laugh because what does an Australian know about football? American football. And the truth is, not much, but we're going to go there anyway. Specifically, let's look at the Chicago Bears. Some people are probably saying, yay. Some people are probably saying, eh. But it can apply to any team. How many people are there on the team? You might say 53. You might say 87 based on their last off-season roster. You might say a few more, given their coaching staff, right? But what if I said 561? During a search of my most trusted source, Google, 
for the number of employees within the Bears organization, there was a website that showed me 561. Janitors, kitchen staff, president, accounting, human resource, equipment, medical, and each part makes up the whole. Okay, so sports isn't your thing. Let's forget about sports for a moment. What about the human body, to take the metaphor from the text? For just as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, how many members in a physical body? So I'm not a medical person, so bear with me. But sources tell me there are 9 to 11 major systems in the human body consisting of 78 to 79 organs. And that's even before we mention every single part one by one. And here's something for you. I think it's great that we mention the major systems of the body because we aren't just baptized into a system or denomination, if we're going to take that metaphor. We're baptized into one body. From the text, so it is with Christ. Verse 13, for in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Jews and Greeks, slaves and free, Americans and Australians, and all were made to drink of that one spirit. Tracy knew it. She sat there on the plane, we need people like you, an Australian living in America, to do the work that we do in Papua New Guinea. And we need people like her. So let's bring this a little bit closer to home and talk about FCA. So our mission statement is to lead every coach and athlete into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ and his church. Why and his church? Because we are all members of one body who can grow the next generation of disciple makers right here in Pecatonica and Northern Illinois and around the world. We need people like you to do the work that we do. And FCA reaches areas that are often difficult for the gospel to enter in our communities. Schools, locker rooms, sports fields, reaching some of the most influential people in our culture. You need us, and we need you. We need each other as the body of Christ. Verse 14. For the body does not consist of one member, but many. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body were an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is... There are many parts, yet one body. What are you gifted in? What skills, resources, position, unique characteristics do you have that can serve the body and build her up? And maybe you're sitting here trying to answer that question and you don't feel like you have much to offer or your skills are not noteworthy or important, or you have alternative abilities. Friend, I want to encourage you not to see yourself that way, but in fact, quite the opposite. Numerous times in this passage alone, Paul says that you are not any less part of the body. And if you continue to read on in chapter 12, which we won't dive too deep into, Paul continues, 
with his body metaphor and talks about parts of the body that seem weaker and the parts we, humans, think of as less honorable and unpresentable parts. And God gives them more honor so there is no division in the body. And that all members may have the same care for one another. Verse 26, if one member suffers, we suffer together. If one member is honored, we all rejoice together. So back to Tracy. And if I'm honest, I wasn't real clear about Tracy's part in the body, was I? You may have heard me say her family was part of a team working to translate the Bible, but that doesn't really explain her role. You see, Tracy was a school teacher. She taught the kids of the mission team while others translated the Bible. And Tracy's husband was a carpenter, serving the mission team in the wider community. And think about it. God placed Tracy and her husband in that community. So look at verse 18. God arranged the members of the body where they could use their skills and abilities to serve the body and ultimately bring himself glory. Never before meeting Tracy did I think a teacher and a carpenter were parts of a Bible translation organization. Now, but why wouldn't they be looking at this passage? But if everybody on that team was like Tracy, the Bible would never be translated. I guess you could also draw a conclusion that everyone, if everyone on the team was a Bible translator, the Bible would never be translated because there's nobody to look after the kids or manage the finances or provide the logistics or the supplies. The list could go on. God arranged you in community right here, right now, as he chose, so that you could serve with your unique gifts. Sports people make lousy janitors. You only need to walk into a locker room after a game to see that, right? Or maybe your kid's bedroom. But could you imagine Soldier Field or Lambeau Field or high school or any other venue for that matter that didn't have people with these amazing gifts of service? Or how many times have you heard stories of those professional athletes who have earned millions and millions of dollars only to go bankrupt? Sports people make lousy accountants. So I'm stereotyping, but you get the point. We need your skills in the body. And Tracy makes my point. We need people like you to be able to do the work that we do. This church needs people like you. FCA needs people like you. The body needs people like you to do the work that we do. And everyone has a role on the team. But the question is, are you active within your role? Or are you sitting on the sidelines? Are you waiting for the moment? Are you not feeling equipped? Are you feeling like you are not needed? I mentioned before that I felt a calling into ministry since college and I had an interview with that pharmaceutical company in Rockford when I came back in, in 2017. And here's the deal. I got that job at the pharmaceutical company and I was there for five years before being called to FCA. Five years. And that's not to mention those years prior since first feeling called into ministry. That could have been five years sitting on the sidelines waiting for the calling I knew that was coming. 
waiting for that moment. Or maybe if it wasn't, and maybe if it wasn't for Tracy, it probably would have been. But there were skills during that time that I could use to serve the body within those five years. There were resources during that time that I could serve with. There were relationships during that time that I could serve with. So maybe you're in your five years right now. Maybe your five years is more like 10, 20, 40 years. How are you being part of the body during this time? Or maybe you're not waiting for a plan that you know he has because you know that you're already where you're made to be. But are you active in that plan? Romans 8, 4 to 8 says this, Just as our bodies have many parts and each part has a special function, so it is with Christ's body. For we are many parts of one body, and we all belong to each other. In his grace, God has given us different gifts for doing certain things well. So if God has given you the ability to prophesy, speak out with as much faith as God has given you. Verse 7, if your gift is serving others, serve them well. If you're a teacher, teach well. If your gift is to encourage others, be encouraging. If it is giving, give generously. If God has given you leadership ability, take the responsibility seriously. And if you have a gift for showing kindness to others, do it gladly. And we can continue. Are you a prayer warrior that doesn't pray? Are you gifted in administration and could serve the body in that way? Let me tell you, we need those. Are you talented at sport and could serve with your time as a coach? Are you a good listener, financial counselor, cleaner, teacher? And we could go on. So my prayer is that we all get off the sidelines and use those gifts to serve the body. Because what if we did? Have you ever heard the phrase, teamwork makes the dream work? Yeah? Well, here's another one that I made up. You ready? Teamwork fulfills the vision. You see, FCA has the vision to see the world transformed by Jesus Christ through the influence of coaches and athletes. So think about that in our communities. How big is sport across northern Illinois? How big is sport in Peck and Winnebago? And my role within FCA is to help us move towards that vision, specifically across Northern Illinois, and build a team that can reach coaches and athletes, those most influential people, with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we need you to be part of that team. Yes, part of that is financially. So we are a 100% faith-funded ministry so I'm basically a local area missionary, for lack of a better term, and we rely on the generosity of organizations and individuals to do what we do. So I'm grateful to New Life Church for the generosity that you guys have shown corporately for coming on board as a church partner for FCA across Northern Illinois. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. But we also need you as individuals, as individual team members on the team. But that's only one part of the body, right? Maybe your role is not financial. We need prayer partners to cover this ministry in prayer. We need volunteers, coaches, and athletes in prayer. We need great FCA. We have these great FCA groups called Huddles in Pecatonica and Winnebago, which have opportunities to serve. We have plenty of coaches and athletes that need to know the love of Jesus right here where we are. Or maybe the Lord has placed it on your heart to go deeper. We do have staff positions available if that's of interest. 
So if you are interested in giving to the ministry of FCA or connecting in any way, I'll be available after ser service today um, out there. And we have these mission cards. And on the back of these cards, there's some giving options, but there's also ways to connect. So connecting for whatever reason, just feel free to reach out. But they're also simply a reminder to pray. Pray for the ministry and pray for coaches and athletes around the area. We need people like you to do the work that we do. Jesus is in the business of transforming people. And let's do it together. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I give you thanks for the body of believers here at New Life Church. And Lord, we praise you for, for us being all members of one body, that we can come together and serve one another and equip each other with our unique gifts and abilities. And Lord, we pray now that you would show us and guide us in them how to use them for your glory in our area and impacting the rest of the world and transforming people for you and bringing people closer to you. We thank you for your son, Jesus, and all that he did for us. And we say all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.